Hello, Dr. J here. We're going to continue our discussion with circuit analysis, but this time we're going to talk about signals that change in time. So far we've talked about signals that don't change, or DC signals, and now we're going to introduce waveforms. And this is a key ingredient if you want to understand how communication systems work. So far the previous videos discussed signals or DC signals that do not change. And the figure is shown here where we have the time axis on the horizontal and the vertical is the amplitude and the amplitude doesn't change with time. We call this a DC signal or constant signal. Mathematically this can be expressed where we have a constant voltage such as a battery or a constant current source going from minus infinity to infinity for all time. Now we know that a battery doesn't last forever but this just serves as a useful model and we're going to talk about signals that change and if you want to carry information. Now if they don't change then we get the same thing over and over as shown in this diagram or figure. We're going to start off by introducing three basic time varying signals. From there we can develop more complex signals by combining these basic signals. As a way of introduction we normally think of a signal as an electric current I of T or a voltage V of T. That is the time variation of a signal is called a waveform. More formally a waveform is basically in our case a voltage V of T or current I of T described as a function of time. Up to this point our study has been limited to the type of waveform that we've shown here. A couple words on notation for V of T and I of T which is constant in this case for a DC or constant signal. When it's constant and doesn't change with time we capitalize the variables. As shown here it's V sub 0 and I sub 0. And we reserve the lowercase letters V and I to be a function of time. Now if we don't show the argument T, it's still implicit that the val voltage and current, or V and I, is still a function of time. So for example, V, as you've shown here, does not have an argument of time, but it's implicit when it's a lower case, either V or I, then it is a function of time. So that's the notation associated between a time varying signal and a non time varying or constant signal. Let's look at some example waveforms. We'll start off with some periodic signals. Here's the familiar sinusoidal wave, either a sine or a cosine. And we denote this as red in text and in the graph to show that these are the basic waveforms we'll, where we can create more complicated waveforms based on the sinusoidal wave, the unit step, and the exponential, which we'll see in the next couple slides. Here's our square wave where we turn on and off periodically. And our sawtooth wave where we can use it as a sweep, sweeping from left to right in an oscilloscope, for example. And then we have a triangular wave. Now here's an example of an aperiodic signal which we call a damping sinusoid. They don't repeat. You can see it's a combination of an exponential signal and a sinusoidal signal where we multiply these two functions. So on the next slide we have our damped sinusoid. In this case we start off with a maximum of one so it's a unit and then it goes decreases so here we have e to the minus e at times cosine omega t. So it's a combination of uh, exponential, shown here, one of our basic functions, and a sinusoidal signal, which is was shown earlier. Then we have a unit step, in which we turn off, and then we turn on. We'll get to this. Here we had negative time, so it turns on after time t equals zero. We'll talk about that more a little bit later. Then we have a unit ramp and our basic signal, our exponential. So our basic signal consists of a sinusoid, a unit step, and an exponential. And based on these signals, we can create 
more complex signals. Now the basic signals such as the sinusoidal, the unit step and exponential are used to basically approximate more complex signals. Now why do we use these basic signals? Well they help us predict as we take these signals as an input to more to a system such as filters such as a high pass, low pass, band pass, band stop filters and see what the output is. Now it's going to require a little bit more background such as uh, Fourier series and the Fourier transform to analyze and predict the behavior of the output. But that will come in uh, other s series of video. The first basic signal in our catalog is the step function. Here the general step function is defined on the unit step function which we'll define here as follows where u of t is equal to zero for t that is negative and equal to one when t is equal to zero or positive. So when the arg whenever the argument is equal to zero then the value the amplitude is zero and when it's positive then it's equal to one. Strictly speaking it is impossible to generate a true step function since signal variables like current and voltage jump from one value to another in zero time. Practically speaking we can generate very good approximations to the step function which is required that the transition time be short compared with other response times in the circuit. Actually the generation of an approximate step function is the everyday occurrence since people frequently turn things like TVs, stereos, and lights on and off. So here we can show how a step can be generated physically constructed by this following circuit diagram. Here we assume that the transition from off to on occurs instantaneously at the time of the switch is shown that is at t equals zero in this figure. So here's a graphical illustration of what a step function looks like described by this mathematical relationship where it is zero when it's negative and one when it's positive. So this is a graphical illustration of a unit step that's turning on at time t equals zero. Now can we turn it on at other times, like at one second, point two seconds, etc.? Well we can by changing the argument of t. And that's shown on the next slide. Next slide right here. So if you want to shift it, where ts is a shift and it's a positive number in this case right here, and we have a different amplitude in addition to a unit step so we're multiplying the amplitude by VA but in this case we set T minus TS equal to zero that implies that T is equal to TS so when T is less than TS that's equal to zero and then when T is greater than or equal to TS that's equal to VA so it turns on after it shifts TS and we call that a delay. Now an advance is when T plus TS is equal to zero and in this case the function is off before minus TS and the function turns on after uh, shifting by negative TS. Again we set the argument T plus TS is equal to zero and this implies that T is equal to minus TS and this determines when you turn on the step function uh, and off. So in this case we want to turn it on based on the shifting parameter TS. So graphically we can see that at TS is equal to zero there's no shift at TS is equal to zero and a delay occurs when TS is greater than zero as shown here and advance is when TS is less than zero shown here. So that's how you determine and make functions of the unit functions UT to either shift it to the left shown here as an advance or to the right shown as a delay.